Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Briggs. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> out, bud. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I truly am. Well, it's, uh, um, it's an honor for us to have you out, too. I'm so you... happy to get through that song. Uh, <laughs> well, you did great. Frank, you are, in my opinion, I, I said this before, you're a very tasteful drummer. You're one of the most tasteful drummers I've seen or heard, I guess, and uh, very smooth, very smooth well, playing. Thank you. I, 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 th that's probably the best compliment I, I could get hmm. to me. Ah. I, I like when people say that, you know, if, yeah. so, if something's feeling good or that I'm tasteful, I mean, I, I, I mean that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? um, so, by the way, that song uh, was written by uh, uh, Kit Walker, who is uh, an incredible composer, piano player, and all around great guy. And uh, yeah. if you aren't familiar with his work, his first couple albums, I, I um, discovered him in like 1988, 89 or so. And uh, he had Steve Smith and Will Kennedy, guys like that on his first couple albums. They were tremendous, and yeah. I was a fan. Uh, and actually, like, hooked up with him on MySpace when... Uh, nice. When I was, yeah. I, I had posted some music, and Kit said, hey, man, this stuff is burning. And I just thought I jumped on that. Yeah. You know, because uh, uh, he was a hero of mine. So I, uh, it was, it's a real treat for me to get to play one of his songs. That's a tune called Gonzo. No one's ever heard it until right now. No kidding. Yeah. Well, first, you will all be able to yeah. download it as a play along in time. Not right yet, but uh, and uh, this is a great lesson topic for you because you're so tasteful. The, the whole lesson topic is building a musical vocabulary, and that's something we all want to do as drummers. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your perspective on things and and uh, showing us some some tips and all that. If you haven't seen Frank yet, I mean, you've been in the business for years. You've been playing, <laughs> yes. yeah, and not in an insulting way. Yeah. No, no, no. It's yeah. it's, it's you know. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, first of all, I, I have to say I'm, I am so uh, thrilled to be here, and I've been critical of Dromeo in the past, mm -hmm. and and I've, Jared and I have talked about it, and um, and it's just you know different styles, and it was nice to, to talk about education at, with people that actually cared, mm -hmm. and you guys care, mm -hmm. and it's Thank really you. obvious uh, how much you care by. Just this whole operation, it's just amazing. <laughs> and I, I told Jared, I said, drum lessons. He goes, don't jinx it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's working so far, yeah, don't jinx it. Yeah, it's working, <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's really cool, and, and uh, I've had a great time hanging with Dave, and Jared's wonderful, and, and I'm real happy to be here. This is a very pro operation. Oh, well, thank so, you so much, man. But I'm this, hoping we get some new members for you guys. Well, uh, uh, follow Frank as well. Go to frankbriggs.com. He has an amazing educational website that, that it's just him. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. Also, you are a publisher of, uh, or a writer, sorry, of, of, of quite a few drum books. Yeah, I've written um, like 10, I think. That's crazy. And there's a lot of members in here that have your books and have gone through it inside of Dromeo, and they're really pumped to see you live oh, here. Nice. Uh, so before we get too far into it, you've got a, two packages that we're going to give away for free to any member watching this in YouTube. 30 days from the post date on YouTube, if you're watching it in there, just leave a comment. What do you think the best part of the lesson was? And we'll randomly choose a uh, winner. And in that package, <laughs> we've got three of your uh, CDs that you've drummed on. Um, there's uh, also, this is the coolest thing here, is this is a record. <laughs> this is a record. For when Frank was vinyl, vinyl. Look at that. Thirteen years old you were when you cut yes, this. Yes, yes. And um, he brought two of them. Um, so we're going to give that along with his three CDs and his book, The Complete Modern Drum Set. This is uh, um, one of your top sellers. I would say uh, it is. It's the top seller. It's been in Mel Bay's top ten percussion books for about twenty two years now. Very cool. So thanks for uh, bringing this out for us. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment below and we'll send you this free of charge. Um, but huge thanks to the sponsors for helping. Istanbul, I got Istanbul, symbols. Agop symbols. They're great. Sound my, amazing. My favorite. Yeah, they, they're really nice. I'm using uh, the uh, Agop signature line, which Dave was, uh, and the sound mixer was, was mentioning how... Um, how nice and balanced they sound, and just not overpowering, mm -hmm. and and uh, you can dig in, and they don't overpower them. Yeah, 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 they're, yeah, they're yeah. there. They mix really well with the drums, and these are my favorites. So I, I brought these up from LA just uh, because I I really can't play anything else. 
Yeah, and it sounds great. Yeah. You'll hear more of them in this lesson. Um, and uh, for those who are wondering, if those who are watching just on YouTube or watching it live right now, we do a lot more inside of Dromeo.com. We are going to be doing a full course with Frank as well as releasing some play-alongs and we're doing an interview with him tomorrow. That's just exclusive for members. So if you like what we do here and you're digging our free stuff, check us out at Dromeo.com. We do a lot more in there. And also make sure you go to FrankBriggs.com, follow him there and check out what he does too. He's got a, a pretty big following for a reason. So, yeah, um, well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's get into it. Um, building a musical vocabulary. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we were trying to uh, come up with uh, the, the, the topic, I mean, this came up a few times, and, and I, you know, I, think it's, I think it's important, uh, but it's huge, and we have like an hour here. So what I'm going to do is hit on, um, hit on a few different things that, that I'm going to go into uh, greater depth in the uh, in the courses. So building a musical vocabulary. Um, well, th the first thing is you have to have a vocabulary, and, and a lot of people don't know where to start. So we have this. Uh, I have this graphic, and you'll be able to download this uh, below the video or wherever you guys are going to make it available. So what I what I have is like twenty rhythms, and these rhythms are must know. You have to know these. Mm -hmm. And in those, if you look at like A, B, C, D, and E, um, A is just a quarter note. Uh, B, eighth notes, 16th notes. Um, it's a PDF you guys can all download yeah, and follow along. Yeah. We're looking at the and, first one. And some of those can be um, like uh, Gary Chafee. I'm a big fan of Gary Chafee's work and his books. In fact, a lot of my you know, teaching is based on ideas I've gotten from Gary Chafee, uh, I've, ideas I've gotten from Alan Dawson, uh, Jim Chapin, and so Some guys that I think are, are uh, you know, the superstars of, of drum education and came up with some really great systems. Um, Chafee would define like like grooves this way by these cymbal rhythms. So you have like quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, uh, uh, combinations, uh, eighth note, two sixteenth notes, dot, da da dot, da da dot, uh, two sixteenths and eighths, da da dot, da da dot, da da dot. And uh, you know, everyone recognizes those as like is as as cymbal patterns. So you, if you a quarter note groove Eighth notes, sixteenths, you know, up, and, uh, and each one of those is in a complete library of information. I mean, if you, you want to work on those symbol patterns and come up with um, I'll come up with go through uh, uh, as many different combinations of, of bass and snare drum um, uh, beats t to fit those uh, those ride patterns, and some of the things that I do is using uh, rudiments. Okay, rudiments is an, another thing that uh, if you want to build a musical vocabulary, besides these twenty rhythms, you're going to need to know. At least some rudiments, and the, the ones that work really well for drum set playing, and it's been, you know, done to death is um, paradiddles. But you would take like um, the, the the, and I'll be real quick with this. But let's say it's this pattern: one and a two and a three and a four, and you take a a, a paradiddle pattern, split between your bass drum and your snare drum. You should be able to do that. And there's eight different paradiddle stickings. So you have the, the one everyone talks about the most, and most people know if you ask them to play a paradiddle, they play right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Well, if you um, displace it, and this is another way to develop a musical vocabulary, is not only by learning th these 20 rhythms and, all the ap and a few applications that I'm going to give you today, we'll go in deeper in the courses, but learning the rudiments and taking these symbol patterns 
and learning, uh, if you displace the, the uh, th there's eight notes in the uh, paradiddle sticking. If you displace it, you'll get eight different variations. So you have right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, and then those four reverse, starting with the left hand. Mm -hmm. And really, you need to do those. You need to practice those. You not only need to have them together with your hands, but in these other ways, like reorchestrating the the uh, the stickings between the bass drum and the snare drum. And then you can move around the drums a little bit, and you got like a ton of information. Mm -hmm. And you have, and this is what I think is like really important, um, you have stuff that you can remember and retain. So you, you, you want a vocabulary that you can call up. And we, um, as human beings, we remember things by association. It's one of the ways, but uh, I gave Dave an example earlier. You know, if I mentioned Abraham Lincoln, give me 10 things and you're gonna, you know, top hat, mm -hmm. beard, civil war, uh, slavery, uh, you know, assassinated, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, it's, so it's kind of similar. If you, you have these, what my goal here is in this lesson to the best of my ability is to get you so that when you look at a page like this, you see a lot of stuff. You see a lot of possibilities. And, and that's, that's kind of part of being you know, creative with all of this stuff. And I think it's important that we you know, see ourselves as, as artists and, and creators, and there isn't one way to do it. I watched a few uh, Drumeo videos trying to get ready for this, and I saw you know, a real common theme, which I'm gonna cover again today, which is you know, theme variation. And the really great players know how to um, use contrast. Uh, to make things interesting. So if you're always playing something complicated, it's, it, gets, it, it gets really boring sounding. There's nothing, you need something to contrast that uh, busyness. So I've, I've come up with a few ways to, they're easy, everyone should be able to do them, where uh, I don't call it call and response, I'll call it theme variation. A and a B. So you got an A that you that you you start with, and then you have a B that's a variation. You go back to A, then another variation, hmm. and so on. And if you, um, we talked about this at lunch today. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, "You are what you eat." Uh, in in music, I think it's "You are what you practice." So if if you're practicing in musical ways, then there's there's no other thing that can happen than. Um, for that to find its way into your live playing and your recording playing because mm -hmm. that's how you practice. If you're gonna practice licks over and over again and not really uh, be disciplined and work on tempo, uh, tempo is real important, tempo groove. It's part of building a musical vocabulary. You wanna be musical first and then build on that. We've had like great drummers, uh, who I think are great. Uh, you know, Kenny Aronoff, Ringo Starr, uh, Rich Redman. These are guys that play like really simple things and make them sound great. Uh, Steve Ferroni, very, very simple. Um, I could go on, the drummer from Aerosmith, the drummer from ACDC. You don't have to be a, a virtuoso to be musical. So keep that in mind. You can take it wherever you want to take it, and I think it's all good. You know, there's, there's some things that are technically easy to do, but artistically difficult. Um, and I just taught this on my own website, the groove to Billie Jean, which is just doot, dot, doot, dot, doot, dot, doot, dot. And everyone I have can do that beat. We play it with a track, and then we listen back to it and we look at how even it is. It's not, well, not everyone can do it. because And then there's a certain lope that needs to happen all the way through. So we're gonna cover some of that stuff too. So uh, we got those rhythms and of course you can use them as, um, to define grooves. Quarter note grooves, eighth note grooves, sixteenth note grooves, uh, and then the jazz patterns. Uh, another way to practice these is uh, that I do a lot of is over an ostinato. And I don't need a graphic for this. We'll put it up a little bit later. But the one, the ostinato that I use the most is um, 
uh, you could call it the Bayonne rhythm or the Tresillo rhythm. It's it's in almost every culture, and it's at 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 this. So you're gonna to want to learn how to play quarter notes against that. And so on. And just get so you can be comfortable with that. You can use that uh, ostinato in almost every style of music. It, it exists, I mean, uh, that ostinato in rock, So on. It's in it's in uh, uh, New Orleans. So it's a really important one, and and uh, it sounds good on the bass drum. And you can always take those notes out when you're uh, improvising. I always don't play like every note uh, in there. In fact, it's one of the exercises I give people. So you start with the ut 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 ut, and you get comfortable with that, and then you can go to the uh ut. Uh, that, uh, and you, you find that you do quite a bit with that. So, um, you know, practicing sixteenths over that is um, is really important. So, the, in in your in your PDF, um, we have uh, just sixteenths, and it, and I, I suggest that you work on accents for this. Um, so, the ones that are written in the graphic are this. Uh, So those are the two that you have. Now let's talk about this for a second. Uh, dynamically, um, what's important uh, so that you can play these accents properly is to at least know, um, and you gotta pardon me, I know that the audience is beginners and more advanced people, so this is for the, the beginners. There's four strokes, you need to know these. Full stroke, starts high, ends high. Downstroke, starts high, ends low. Tap stroke, starts low, ends low. Upstroke, starts low, ends high. Okay, and an uh, exercise for all four of those is two accents, two taps. So you can get all four of them together. Now, I have, we, I have people um, work on mostly the, uh, the down and upstroke. Because that gives you a nice dynamic range, and that's important for being musical. Uh, you can't, you're not going to sound musical if you're up playing at, at triple forte all the time. Uh, even if you're playing metal uh, or hard rock, uh, being able to adjust the dynamics, come down for the verses, how you how you play your hi hat, how far open it is, is super important. Because as drummers, we're like the conductor in a small ensemble. So we, we are really in control of, of the dynamics. And so normally in most bands, if, if the drummer comes down, people will come down with them and, uh, and vice versa. And fills have a purpose. We, I think, I think our, our purpose is to create energy in a, in a groove, you know? Um, drums and dance are like, to me, you can't have one without the other. And once we realize what our role is, and it's, I think it's to make people move. And when I say dance, I'm not talking about getting up and cutting a rug necessarily. This is dance. You know, if someone's snapping their fingers or if you're just doing this in the audience, that's dancing. And that's kind of what we want to create from people. And it doesn't matter if it's in an odd meter or not. Um, we had a discussion recently about odd meters, and I firmly believe that you know odd meters can uh, can be just as funky and, and musical as, as four four. It just depends on on how you approach it. So drums and dance uh, accents, right? So uh, 
for instance, back to the ostinato, I could do like, I could take that that uh, uh, Bayonne or Tresillo ostinato on the bass drum and do like a um, uh, like a New Orleans kind of feel. Those are just all accents, and I'm using basically uh, downstroke, upstroke, all right? So you're gonna wanna be able to do that. So you're gonna wanna play those four strokes. You're gonna wanna know those 20 rhythms. You're gonna wanna practice at least uh, for the beginners, you know, quarter note rock, eighth note rock, 16th note uh, grooves. And uh, then I have a couple systems. How are we doing on time? We've got about 15 minutes. Oh, we're already, we're already running out of time. We're running okay, out. so I have um, something that I call a one-beat modifier. So it's 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 this is a lot easier to take if you if you do it in small chunks, which is why um, why I wrote these all out in one four. It's a it's a one-beat rhythm, and a one-beat modifier is basically changing up one beat in a groove. So you have a groove or you will have, I forgot about Just that Just make up any groove, yeah, yeah. you got this. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> you will have a groove. Yes. Uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's this, it's, um, it's based on the clave. All right, so that's the groove. Now, it's, it's based on the clave, uh, and if you don't know what clave is, you need to learn that. Uh, one, a three, a one, two, a one, two, three. That's the three, two, sun clave. I'm not going to go any further with that. I'll discuss clave more in the in the course, but at least learn that one, and uh, and the sixteenth notes and accents. You can also uh, keep the right hand on on the hi hat. All right, now that's that's nice filler material. I have a book called Groove Elements. Um, and it, it's mainly, like if you're playing a Latin groove, you're not gonna be playing the bell pattern and the, the whole pattern through the whole song. There's comping involved. And this is a really easy way to. that in there, but you use it little bits of that and it helps you go from one place to another and you're already playing 16th notes, you, you're all set up to, to fill um, and, and have it uh, have all those transitions between your grooving and filling be, um, be nice and smooth. So the one beat modifier, I'm going to demonstrate that groove to unt, 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 and this is a blues, let me play this bass line for you and uh, another thing everyone should know how to do is play the blues. The blues is uh, the basis of rock and jazz. Very, very important. So learn how to, uh, now I'm gonna count this. This is a 12 bar blues, um, and the count is this. Five, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, six, two, three, Seven two three four eight two three four nine two three four ten two three eleven twelve one right back to one. Now using the one beat modifier, I'm going to just change up beat four, but I'm going to uh, kind of half time the count so it'd be like a six four bar because of the way things are written. Three four two two three three four one two. Three, four. Right? Okay. Okay, so there, what I did was I used a couple rhythms off of this page, and I just uh, modified, I don't want to call it a fill because it's so small, 
I call it a modification. I think I got that term from Gary Chafee as well. And if you don't have Gary Chafee's books, go get them. Everyone should own those. Um, so that's a, a one, what I call a one-beat modifier, and you can go, you can get crazy with that. So um, basically, what you're doing is you're, you're you're playing three quarter notes of the beat, and then the last quarter note you're adding one of these bars in there. Exactly. Right. Yeah, as a fill, and and you can orchestrate them uh, any way you want. So if you have like four sixteenth notes, or you could take that last sixteenth note and put it on the bass drum. Let me see. Actually, put, let's put the bass drum on the E. That'd be a little easier. Right? So you got the... Uh. Right, it's just 16th notes, and there's a lot you can do with just the 16th notes. And I'll get more into that. Um, actually, while I'm there... Um, I'll play just a little bit of the one, uh, the one beat modifier with uh, comping, and I'm just gonna pick stuff off of this page here to put on beat four, and I might go a little bit further. Let's try that. Okay, so that, that's, um, it's hard to make it like an exercise exercise. So what I was doing is like picking stuff randomly and I was also listening to the, the Hammond organ comping. And you're gonna get this uh, loop as well. And it's not quantized. This is Kit Walker, a world-class oh, okay. keyboard player, yeah. playing left-handed bass and comping. And the idea with this exercise is to respond to what's going on and try, it, try the best of your ability not to step on what's going on there. So. Um, I did some uh, 16th notes, uh, 16th note triplets there. The so you take your, you you take the triplets. The And orchestrate them on the drums, um, and you get a bunch of different ideas. So you get a lot, you get a lot of mileage out of this. And if you've worked on it, you'll be able to call them up in the moment. And I think that that's kind of the whole idea of of playing music and and being being the best drum set artist you can be. And this is not a, an instrument that I feel. Here, I'll take this one. Uh, okay, there you go. So uh, I might need it again. Download the PDF, take these one beat modifiers, try them on the last little part of it, and learn all these as well. Be creative yeah. with them. Right. We gotta move on though, we're almost okay. out of time, buddy. All right, so um, the next thing is, uh, um, all right, so let's say, we're, I'm gonna, I'll show you a really quick example of motion. So we got, we got our ostinato, and we have our 16th notes, and we're able to play them dynamically. Um, one thing I do is what I call like discovery exercises where they're just kind of open-ended and they're different for everybody. And one is uh, uh, like motion. And I won't get into the whole thing, but the idea is to use everything on your set and to get used to your rig and being able to play it in a bunch of different ways. And I have exercises that get you to play everything on your drum set and start thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. So one of them is um, using, using motion and 
uh, I'll give you two shapes, uh, triangles and squares. And my right hand is gonna move counterclockwise in a square. And let's, that means four voices, all right? So. You know, with that same ostinato. Okay, believe it or not, you can do quite a bit with that. Now let's go the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Now you can have four different starting positions. I started on the snare drum. If I start on the hi-hat, it displaces that tom hit. If I start on the ride cymbal, it displaces the tom again. Start on the tom. Okay, all of those have distinctly different feels because I changed where the where the uh, tom was happening. So this is like an I don't know how other people do it. I I wanted to come up with some things that would get um, me, you know, just doing thing more musical things. So that's one. That's a square, and. Uh, I'll cover this in depth in, in the course. So join Dromeo today so that you can see this. I think a lot of you will get some, some benefit out of this. Um, a triangle is just three voices. So I'll make it the snare, hi-hat, tom again. It's one, two, three, four. All right, now I ended it, I resolved it, but you can just keep going. And you're basically doing like a very easy polyrhythm, but that's not the point. That The point is to create interest and shape and color. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. Now with some music, It's really, really, it's real simple, and, and it's doable, and, it, and I was using dynamics, uh, which is really important, because if you hammer everything, it's just not gonna sound, sound musical. So you have to do the work with the dynamics, of using the four strokes, at least the, get the down and the up together. So you have like, um, what David Garibaldi called mm -hmm. the, the, the two dynamic levels. Those, right. are the, those are the ones that he was talking about. So, um, we have like let's take a three bit beat figure that everyone knows uh, the the John what I call the John Bonham triplet or Elvin Jones triplet and it's this right and you can you start uh, applying these motions to that and. triangle and I got this nice little interesting uh, phrase that's actually phrased in uh, what, what I call a three three two phrasing one two three one two three one two it's eight notes mm -hmm. but but that's a much more interesting way to phrase those eight notes and that three three two can be three two three two three three so I'll do it again with a half time shuffle a little faster Dynamics with that triplet um, is hard because I'm, I'm I have these in ear monitors that I need one of them out while I'm talking. Um, if you uh, use dynamics with the triplets, uh, what I do is 
Uh, I'll start with just one accent, so it's, it's this. So it's just the first note and everything else is a tap. Then the second note. One. And then the second, then the left hand. The second note of the left hand. Um, Combine that with the shapes, uh, and you can get a lot of mileage out of that. Now, displacement, we got right, left, foot. Uh, if we put the bass drum on the beginning, to sound like a lot more advanced than it than it actually is that's not really bad um, to learn it's not it's it, it's totally within I'm gonna guess within most of the audience's um, reach okay it's dynamics and it's triplets and then you can uh, another uh, creative device I call a device or I, I mean I heard people call these devices is I would um, to turn it around, uh, using a little device to turn that triplet around, we got right. So I want to turn it around to starting on the bass drum. All I have to do is double my double my foot, right? So. Now, all of those were different sounding enough, mm -hmm. and you're not getting so far out. I mean, Dave DeSemso, one of my favorite drummers, uh, mentioned, you know, talking about telling a story, and the story is based on one idea. So you're not getting too far away from, I mean, that's the same idea. And you can displace it again by putting the bass drum in the middle. Uh, so there's that. Now, there's another creative device that I use um, that's uh, called expansion and collapsing. And I'll do like a quick de demonstration of that. So uh, expansion collapsing is something I got from Jim Chapin and it, it, the idea, and I, and I just had some other ideas for it. And uh, just the fact that you're already playing something and, and you just modify the phrasing of a, of a couple beats. And the, one of the best examples is a paradiddle. So um, you take the paradiddle like right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And I changed the diddles, the doubles, to instead of 16th notes to 32nd notes, and I get. Uh, so I'm still playing a paradiddle. And what you find is, because your, your hands are already used, if you've done the practice, mm -hmm. And if anyone's wondering, it takes work. You know, there, there's practice time involved in, in this stuff. Um, what's nice is now you have something that kind of flows, mm -hmm. you know, from one to the other and kind of feels good, at, um, at least it does to me. So, if, like, so you practice that over the asana. last one but that's that's kind of the idea so that's expansion and collapsing so what we're gonna do let's take this triplet figure all right so it's one and a two and a three and a four and a and let's expand it it's eighth note triplets let's 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 stretch it out so it's on the 16th note grid so this um,
right? Mm -hmm. So now it's now it's sixteenth notes, and you have this in your um, uh, in your PDF. Now that's uh, three over four phrasing, or three in four kind of phrasing, whatever you want to call it. It's basically uh, uh, you got here's your quarter note. One two three 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 Right, and I, that was a two-bar version. So one, two, three, 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 one. All right, takes three bars to resolve, and I, I'm I'm I, I'm gonna guess that someone has already done this on Dromeo. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's that's your three-note figure, the right-left foot. Um, now we've we've um, expanded it to the sixteenth-note grid. And let's say you've done all the work with dynamics and motion, okay, with the triplets, which is a lot easier to get under your belt than, than the 16th note grid, the three over four. Um, so you've done that work, and we got like, um, let me try it with, uh, with, with the grooves. We have two minutes? Yeah, we have about two minutes. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Time um, flies, man, I tell you. So what I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna use, I'll just use one of them. Um, uh, I look at this as here's the whole exercise, Number and four. you can do a three bar version, but two bars and one bar are probably more common. So if I had um, uh, this groove. Uh now, there's opportunities in there, that's what I call them. Uh, so this one, this particular one, uh, you have an opportunity to resolve it, uh, uh, Peter is gonna call it destination points, on the uh. All right, so. Uh, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I extended it over the bar, I would end up on the and of the next bar, and that's kind of what I was looking for, but I'm, we're, I got two minutes to <laughs> tie this up. This is gonna go into depth in the courses. Um, so you use the same, the same motion exercises that you would for the triplets for these, and you're gonna find that uh, if you use everything on your drum set, that, that these ideas can sound way more than what they are, and really musical. And the more comfortable you are playing some of the things, the, the more comfortable the music's gonna feel. Now, one final thing is I will modify this. And one way I'd modify this, and this is, requires some bass drum technique, uh, and here's a ex quick exercise. All right, so it just doubles. And if you apply that to this, Okay, so that's what I call a bass drum drag. I have a I have a book called The Good Foot, and it's really all about two notes, the bass drum drag, mm -hmm. and how to, how to apply it and and orchestrate it. So uh, I'll I'll leave you with that one, and uh, you have the PDF, and yeah, that, are we done? We're getting close, man. We're getting close. Yeah. Okay. We gotta I got to still get you to play us out too. Um, we'll get to some questions to see if there there uh, there are some, but um, before we do. How do the students take all this information and apply it? How do they build a musical vocabulary with this? Well, first, uh, the first thing is to, uh, I strongly recommend learning tunes. Uh, so you want a tempo, you want a context. Um, to me, like learning, learning a lick is not gonna get you anywhere. I mean, you, the first and foremost thing you need to do is work on your time and how your time feels and Musicality, I, I look at it as just like taste, you know. Um, 
you know, there's guys that can dress themselves. But if you're colorblind, you're going to put like purple with green, and it's not the same. You know, but they mm -hmm. can technically they can dress themselves, mm -hmm. right? So it's the same kind of thing. I mean, you want to lis be listening to the music around you and respond to it, which is why I have some of these these exercises. And you want to understand rhythm. Uh, rhythm. Uh, rhythm doesn't have a genre, so it doesn't matter if you're playing metal or jazz or Latin or whatever floats your boat, you still need to know rhythm. And that's what this is about. And I'll, I'll give you one final example of a rhythm. It's, um, it's this is a one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four. All right, it's pretty simple. Uh, and this idea, um, there's a, a book that John Ramsey, uh, who I think is the chair at Berkeley, or was, uh, Alan Dawson's teaching method. And Alan Dawson had a, uh, a system called Waze. And he had like, so, you know, I don't know, 40 ways to play the 48 rhythms in syncopation. And that was really helpful for me. So I took that and, and you know, he didn't cover every single way. And a lot of this came up in the 60s. And it was uh, also, he, he had the, the rudimental ritual was, uh, a bass drum ostinato, but you played it with rudiments with brushes, and it was an old, like, kind of a, a bassa. Kind of ostinato, I changed that to the, and not brushes, mm -hmm. you know, and just like, and, and learn other stuff over the top of it. Um, in that, between uh, his work and Gary Chester's book, The New Breed, I, I got uh, looking at different ways to, to read rhythmic lines. So you take a, uh, besides this, if, you're, if your teacher's teaching you how to play syncopation like this. And that's all you're doing, get rid of that guy, okay? Because if you're a drum set player, that's not, that's gonna be really corny. What you want is to be able to take that rhythm, of course you need to do that, that's the first thing. Um, but let's say we read the line for if, for rock. We just we we have uh, an eighth note ostinato with two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we read read the rhythms with our bass drum. So it's. Okay, you go through the forty-eight those 48 rhythms in syncopation, you now have a lot of facility if, if something comes up on a gig or if you're in band practice and you're working on a song and the bass, bass player's playing something mm -hmm. that you feel like you should support, you have already done that work. Um, and besides learning it in, in, in regular time, learn it in cut time. So um, the dot, do dot, do dot, dot, do dot, do dot becomes dot, do dot, do dot, dot, do dot. Da, 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 da. So, uh. All right, so there I used a little bit of theme and variation. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I played the, the slow version, then the fast version, went back and forth. And they sound more musical when you mm. practice like that. And that was number two, that he was just the rhythm that he went through. He just turned that one three-line rhythm into what you just heard there. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And, yeah. and Alan Dawson would have, uh, like, you can take, you can, you can uh, phrase it in triplets. So you got the... So. Swing it a little bit, and you fill the holes in with your left hand. Bunch of different things. It's all da 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 da. One, two, and three, and four. Use your imagination. I mean, uh, th this. 
I'm always amazed when someone says, ah, I'm just bored. It's like, dude, how can you possibly I know, I never be got bored? That. Yeah. There's so much, I'm like 62 years old and I'm like, I'm not even close yeah. to having uh, the, the facility that, that I know is possible for myself. And uh, you should feel that way, you know? You, mm -hmm. should, uh, you should treat this uh, with, you should treat the instrument with respect. Consider yourself an artist, even if you're at a, a low level artist, but learn the history of the drums, uh, the drum sets, the rhythms, learn everything. It doesn't matter if you're playing thrash metal, you should know how to play a bossa nova. And I'm dead serious, uh, because your knowledge of the history not only of the drum set of the instrument, but of the music and of the rhythm, there's something about that that brings a depth to your playing that is kind of undescribable. Mm -hmm. it, there, there's just something about it. And we know, because we've seen so many masters. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky enough to take lessons with Jack DeJeanette back when I was younger, and uh, it was an amazing experience. I totally was not ready for it. Uh, but. I, you know, some of the stuff I learned, it was like five years later, I just go, oh, that's what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, it was amazing. So, and it's, yeah. it's ongoing, and he's yeah. still putting out great stuff in his 70s. And, you know, so enjoy the ride. It's all about the journey. Absolutely. Thank you. Is that okay? That's great. <laughs> great. Tons of information. You might have to watch this one a few times. You know, just a little bit of the nuggets that you would pull out from one pattern and what you can expand on that to build your vocabulary. That could be months of practice alone. And you talked about, you know, those one bar, one uh, uh, quarter note phrasings or right. patterns, rhythms, I guess you can say, uh, soloing over uh, ostinatos with accents. You know, I mean, there's just a lot of information in here. And um, the song that you're going to play us out to and the song you started with, and you even said these loops in here too you're going to offer. Yes, yes. Um, so. We're going to, I actually got permission from Bill Bruford to... Uh, um, Share this. Give, share yeah. Beelzebub with you all. I put a lot of work in, in, in on it. This song, is a, this song is a big challenge, and it's got nothing to do with probably anything I just talked about other than it's a you know, three-and-a-half-minute white-knuckle ride, and uh, hopefully I'll get through it all. You got it. All right. We'll leave it there, guys. We are going to dig deeper into this in a course that we're calling Expanding Your Musical Vocabulary, which we're going to be doing um, tomorrow. We'll be filming it tomorrow. So if you're watching this in the archive or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably already on Drumeo. Um, but it's going to be really cool. And uh, again, thanks for all who are watching. If you are watching this on YouTube within the 30 days, make sure you put a comment. What do you like the most about this lesson? You might win one of our bundles that we're going to be giving to you uh, away to the members. And thank you, Frank. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for having me. So we'll leave you with Frank playing us out with an amazing song, Beazelbub.